So, hopefully, Audio is working. Let's see. Should be fine. Yep, we're getting an image here. Apologize. A little snacks here, guys. Uh, please let me know down in the comments below if the audio is good and you can hear me well. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. Um, kind of trying out this lovely microphone, which is wirelessly connected to the camera. So, um, audio is good. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, just to, I don't know, give you a little uh, backstage view of what's going to happen today. So I have this package over here, which contains probably the world's smallest canister filter, at least the smallest canister filter I could get for the moment. It might be the case that there are smaller filters out there in the world. You know, there is always someone bigger, better, stronger out there. However, this thing is pretty damn small. And if I happen to get a smaller one in the future, you guys will see it. But let's put it aside here. I have here, if you see me watching down, I have my laptop here, so I have the live stream, uh, the chat here. Uh, so yeah, just having like a look on your uh, comments. And uh, yeah, also, I think that's it. I think we have everything in the image here. Let me zip a little bit of coffee. Mm. And before I forget it, you see there behind me is the 20 centimeter cube you've seen in the thumbnail. And that filter is for that aquarium. And right next to it, I have two super jet filters positioned because this is what this little boy here has to, yeah, has to be compared with. Um, I would say you've been super eager to know what is in the box and um, yeah, let me tell you the backstory before I do so. Um, I will update the description of the video uh, kind of silently so you will find out already what's in the box uh, by having a sneak view down in the description below. By the way, all links mentioned you will find down there. So um, the backstory is in a previous video when I've been setting up uh, the 20 centimeter cube uh, and especially doing the four weeks update, the making of the update video, everything is linked down below. Um, yeah, I was asking you guys to submit your ideas what I could use as an external filter because I searched the web, spent literally half a night on Amazon, looked up all kind of canister filters, but nothing to my standards and you know, the very small ES-115 from ADA, the smallest superjet, is still kind of too big. Uh, so I really needed something small. So most uh, of you guys suggested some sort of DIY uh, solution and there are some really cool DIY videos on YouTube and I almost went the route of uh, building a filter myself. While I have a commercially available solution here, that doesn't mean uh, the DIY canister filter is not going to happen on this channel. Uh, simply because I already invested some time looking up and everything and I think I just I'm going to make it uh, uh, just for fun uh, just to show you the process how I would make it and also I mean there is always need for a tiny little filter right uh, so um, now uh, also somebody um, has suggested a brand called uh, uh, what is it liquido design from Italy so I've seen some of the comments here, that filter is not from Vietnam, that filter is from Italy. Uh, and it was uh, Zulandia, I think, uh, who, um, let me check really quick. Yeah, Zulandia, I think it's a shop from Italy. Uh, they kind of reached out to uh, Matteo. He is the owner of Liquido Design. And then he got in touch with me. And uh, I wanted uh, to, how to say, to purchase one of those filters. And he said, hey, I'm going to send it to you like for free. So you can test and review. And if you like it, show it to your audience. And I thought, hey, what would be a better experience than to unbox it live with you guys and share my absolutely true uh, first hand experience on this filter and then put it to the test, uh, compare it side by side with the ADA Superjet filters and also eventually maybe already mount to the little cube. So now let's look what's inside. Here my big professional unboxing knife. 
Super cool. No, just kidding, guys. It's time for some series toys here on this channel. Uh, extra got this knife for those unboxing videos because I, I don't know, I just, I just, I just got into knives recently, don't get me wrong. It's just unboxing stuff all the time and I get a lot of mail and it's just super cool. It's small, handy and for the weirdos you will find a link down below. So let's open the box here and find out what is awaiting us here from Italy. And fingers crossed it arrived well, not damaged or anything. So far so good. We have here a little letter. Let's see what it says. Uh, so it's Italian and yeah, it's, it's like a manual hand signed. So I don't know, like date built. It has a serial number and a stamp and a signature from Liquido Design. So those filters that are not mass produced, they're basically manufactured like a manufacture, you know, like single built, you know, by hand. So let's see what we have next here. Uh, okay, this is some accessories. Let's have a look inside what we have in here. So this is the power brick, pretty regular, like, you know, DC cable. And this little sponges already give you an idea of how small the filter is going to be. I can see it in the box and oh my God, guys, it is so small. I thought it's going to be bigger. Um, and here we have a little rubber pad that can go underneath the filter. Oh my God, this is, this is so small. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get rid of some of the paper. Um, okay, um, you'll see the filter, just a second, okay. Here we have the tubing, uh, some clear tubing. Unfortunately, the tubing comes with a print on it. You can see here a little bit of a print. Hopefully that's visible on camera. Uh, let me put something white behind it that should kind of show the print quite well. Uh, but this is nothing too terrible. Uh, I don't like those, you know, uh, print on the tubing, but this can easily be removed with a what is it called uh, for, for, for the ladies to use it for the nails, nail polish removal. Uh, just borrow it from your better health or just buy something yourself. Uh, uh, I think it's, you know, you need like acetone or something like this, alcohol, so you can just wipe it away. Okay, let's put this aside, zip a little bit of coffee. Not sponsored, I bought this mugs myself. Okay. Now I need your help, guys. Um, I have the filter in here. <laughs> it's so cool. And I have the lily pipes in here. And by the size of the filter sponges, you can imagine how small the filter is. So imagine now how small the lily pipes are. Comment now in the live chat. What do you want to see first? The lily pipes or the filter? I'm gonna give you a few seconds to write in the comments. So what do you want to see first, filter or the lily pipes? Filter, pipes, lily pipes, lily pipes, filter, lily pipes, lily pipes. Okay, lily pipes. We go for the lily pipes, guys. Are you ready? Check this out. Oh my God, look at this tiny lily pipes. <laughs> oh shit, this is so small. I have to be careful not to drop them into the coffee mug. Oh my God, this is so small. This is so small, guys. Uh, this is obviously stainless steel and uh, I literally could run this lily pipes, just the coffee mug for size comparison. Yeah, that, that goes inside. Now I have some coffee foam here. Uh, but. Oh my God, these lily pipes are so small. You might be wondering, like this is not a lily pipe. Uh, this looks like a proper inflow. Uh, you have the slots in here where the water gets inside. Uh, it's closed from the bottom. What is it? A little piece of black plastic or rubber. And on that side, it is closed from the bottom as well with black plastic or rubber, I don't know. 
but then you have this cut opening and I have seen on the images on the home page what it does. The water goes down, it hits the bottom and then it's kind of flushed into the aquarium from this tiny little opening. So not only it is super small, uh, it is also really space saving kind of. I think it's super cool. I'm curious if a design like this could work if made from glass as well. It should. I mean, if it's the same shape, the water would be distributed in the same way. So looking forward, uh, there is a German brand, MIG A. Uh, I was on a phone call, FaceTime yesterday with Kevin. He is the, the guy behind MIG A. is a German brand that produced lily pipes made in Germany. I'm curious if MIG A can do glass lily pipes this shape. Uh, without the band, just a cutout. Because I think to do a V-shaped cutout like this from glass is very, very difficult. I think it's easier to bend it. Uh, yeah, however, here we have the lily pipes. Okay, guys, uh, we have here some tiny little suction cups and little plastic-ish mounts. They go inside like this. And then you can attach it to your tank. Okay, that folds off, so it doesn't hold too tight, but you can see uh, attached like this goes to the side of the aquarium and kind of keeps the lily pipe in place so it doesn't wiggle to the side. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I would try even to use without the suction cups. Now, there is nothing left inside. Okay, there's two things inside the box. <laughs> Oh my God. When, when I started this, I had no idea it's going to be so much fun, guys. And hopefully um, you can read from my uh, yeah, expressions that I really enjoy this unboxing. So we have now inside, we have the filter body and we have the filter pump that sits on top. So another voting for you guys. Do you want to see the, the, the lower part of the filter, the filter body, the canister or the pump that goes on top? Uh, comments, please comment now if you want the canister body or the pump to see next. Okay, uh, first it was the, the pump, now it's body. You know what guys, I'm gonna show you the pump first because then we kind of keep the, the main thing until the very end, okay. Now look at this top part. This is the tiny pump. <laughs> this is so small. Uh, you know, you usually use something like this for tiny, tiny waterfall terrariums. I don't know, like for very small stuff. Uh, so you have here the very tiny pump and this is the lid of the filter. This is incredible. This is so small. There you see the filter sponges that will go inside. Now you, you, you get an idea. So if this is the pump and this is the lid of the filter, you see here, uh, what is the filter going to be? Whew. And the cool, well, we, we'll get to the features in a second. Okay, now we get, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hide the filter behind the box and put the pump on top so you see the full body. Oh, I know. Some of you hate me for doing it this way. How would we do it? Just press it inside. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fine for now. Okay, are you ready, guys? Removing the box in three, two, one. There you have it. Oh my God. Uh, look at that tiny, tiny little filter. This is so cute. Just for size comparison, this is my coffee mug. And this is a regular size coffee mug. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm blown away. This is so cool. Wow. This is tiny. Well, uh, I put the specs of the filter down in the description below. Um, let me look them up really quickly here. On my second device where we have the specs. So, uh, the filter is in diameter, just six centimeters, that's 60 millimeters. And the total height is 177 millimeters, so just 17.7 uh, centimeters. Uh, I don't know the size in inches, apologize guys, but this is, this, is, this is the palm of my hand, okay? This is smaller than 
than your hand, okay? This is small. How small, doesn't matter. Uh, this is incredible. This is, I, I knew it's gonna be small, but I had no idea it's gonna be this small and this cute. Wow, okay. Um, I told you before, this might be not the smallest in the, in the world. Uh, this is definitely the smallest from the Quido design from Italy. I've seen some filters on the internet from Vietnam, I think. Uh, I don't know how small they are. I haven't seen any specs, I just have seen images. They look pretty small uh, with sort of similar angle and the pump, etc. But the question now is, are they even smaller than this one? And does it even make sense to make the filter even smaller? Okay, if you think of the Mini Complete Tank, <laughs> having an external filter to that, uh, something like that, okay. Uh, there might be uh, sense to them, okay. So now let's get to the features, guys. And for that, I would like to take the camera off the tripod and give you like a close-up view because, yeah, of course you want a close-up, right? So give me a second for that. So we have now a little inception going on here. So you see yourself in the live stream probably. Okay, there you go. As close as I can get at the moment. So uh, let me sit behind the camera. So there you go. We can remove the lid. Uh, this is solid stainless steel. Um, the bottom, I don't know how it is secured, but down there I can see a little, uh, I don't know that this has been screwed in. And the cool thing is you can rotate this. You see here, so the outlet can be rotated and this comes with the, the coolest feature. Uh, something, the, this sticker is a little bit too much for my taste. So I think I will be removing the sticker uh, there are definitely more aesthetically pleasing solutions to put your, your brand, your name on a device as a gigantic sticker like this. I mean, the filter is small, don't get me wrong, but a small sticker like this, you know, the size of the ADA logo somewhere down here in white would have been a definitely a much cleaner solution. Okay, so let's put this on the table. Uh, and now how do we mount this so that it goes in the same direction? I think that's the way to go. Or how do I do it? Let me have a look. Yeah, let's keep the mug here for reference. Just put the ADA logo away. So how do they show it? Uh, do you see it on the screen? So we have here the different sizes of the filters. So I have the smallest model here. That's this one, um, and there is a slightly bigger and another, and even a little bit bigger one. Uh, I think they're all same diameter, 60 millimeters, so just taller and a little bit taller as well if you need more filter capacity. And from the filter specs, you have 12 volt. Yes, that's this DC thingy here. And they all do 240 liters per hour, so they all have the same sort of uh, pump, same kind of yeah, capacity, but you, they have different load capacity. So this one is just 10 centimeters. The next one is 20, 25. So for slightly bigger tanks, you could get slightly bigger uh, yeah, canister sizes. So, and this is modular, so you could just then get the canister, keep the pump and then replace it probably. That's how I understand it. And it tells me to mount it like this. So let's do it like this. And uh, so yeah, something that would go inside is one of these sponges. Let's put one of the sponges on the bottom. Okay, there you go. You see the sponge on the bottom. And then I would fill in some biological filter medium such as, I don't know, CK Matrix, ADA, BioRio, anything like that. Probably, you know, something mature. Um, I could take from one of my other filters. You really don't need much in here. You just fill it in there and then you squeeze it from the top with another sponge, uh, but make sure it sits a little bit deeper. So actually that one can go inside like this. Uh, if you want some clear floss filtration, then put the biomedia inside, put a little filter floss inside and then the sponge. 
The reason why, you don't want your filter floats to go inside the pump and block it. Uh, so usually, always we do it this way. So, uh, since the biofilter medium is missing, um, let's build it together without the biofilter medium. Uh, to help close it, I think I'm going to apply some moisture to the rim. Simply take a little bit of water here and wipe around the rubber seal that is hopefully going to help in pushing this inside. Let me see from the side, okay, like this, and now just pressing it down. There you go. Uh, the filter is now sealed and closed. Uh, this is pretty insane. Just look at this tiny little thing, completely built my coffee mug next to it. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> super cool. Okay, um, so now, now getting to the features. Uh, let, let me show you an image here uh, on the screen on the iPad that you can see. So you can use it on slightly larger aquariums. I think that could be something like a yeah, a mini M size aquarium. So you get at least like 25, 24 centimeter in size. Um, you know, there you could go with your lily pipes like this, you know, just keep it really close and go inside the filter. So literally for the smallest tank this size, it could be even standing. Uh, then the next option is, uh, what do we have here? So this is the homepage. Again, the homepage of Liquido Design is linked in the description below. There you see the various options. Um, hopefully that's clearly visible. So you can put it underneath on the bottom. I've been reading the text specs. The pump can go up to three meters height. Uh, definitely is going to reduce the amount of flow. You can keep an upright position and you can put it on the side. And this is what I want to do on my tiny aquarium. So I want to put it on the side like this. And here comes the, I don't know, the, the, the cool features. You can rotate the outlet so it goes into vertical direction. I think this one is rotated to this side and this is rotated to the top. And then I have the filter just like this laying on the ground behind my aquarium. So now imagine how small of an aquarium you can use this filter on. I think I literally could use it on my mini pond. Uh, the mini pond, if you don't know, let me show you the mini pond. Show the mini pond. There is the mini pond on the table. Uh, there is a orange next to it just for size comparison. I think I could literally just put it here next to it. And yep, I think that's enough of a distance. So I literally could run this little tank even on this mini shallow mini pond here where I, I, I said this is like close to impossible to have a filter for that. Okay, so what do we do now? Let's rotate back to the desk. Okay, there we have it. Uh, I'm blown away, guys. I don't know how about you, uh, but I think this filter is crazy. Uh, it's crazy small. The build quality looks very good so far, except of the sticker. I definitely, I'm definitely going to peel off the sticker. I don't want to mess with this on camera because then, you know, I will try to remove all the glue marks. That's going to take way too much time. So let's see what Liquido else has to offer because I think this is pretty interesting to a lot of you uh, as this brand is quite new and unfamiliar to most of you. Let's keep the filter here in the foreground. Okay. Um, and by the way, I know I'm almost completely neglecting the chat for right now because I have to focus on the product and, you know, uh, showing you everything. Uh, there will be a Q&A at the end of this video. So just stick around. Um, I will answer the, uh, some of your questions at the very end. Or if you want to make sure, you know, like that your comment sticks out, then feel free to use of the super chat feature, but don't feel any pressure. Um, uh, how do I do this? Can I see here? Uh, was there any, any, any super chats? I don't know, it doesn't show me here. However, um, so yeah, like I said, I will get uh, to your questions in the chat in a second. So now focusing here on the screen, uh, 
So three mounting options, I just showed you how to use it. Let's put it back into vertical position for that. Whoop. That is cool. That is fun. Love it. Love this feature. So here you see the lily pipes. Uh, not exactly lily pipes uh, because lily pipe per se is something with the like a lily flower with the opening. So this is more of a jet pipe or a simple filter pipe. Uh, so yeah, can be vertical, can lay on the ground. Uh, this is the size 200. So just the cylinder is more extended a little bit. This is the 100 that I have. Uh, what is that? Oh yeah, that one has the pump integrated into the body. But in this case, you have, I think, less filter capacity. So imagine this pump being inside here. So you have even less uh, capacity for filter medium. Uh, but for statics, might be cool. But that would only work in vertical position because the opening uh, doesn't allow rotation on that model. I'm super curious why, because you could easily use a similar mount like here. And I think I would prefer this if the pump was inside, like on the image here. What do you guys think? Would you, would you compromise on filter capacity, but have the pump built in into the body? Uh, say capacity or built in, you know, more capacity or, uh, filter medium or more capacity built in. I don't know, just drop some comments. Super curious to see uh, what is more important to you, the aesthetics to have the pump built in and then you know compromise a little bit on the filter capacity. Um, yeah, I, I see capacity built in, more capacity. You know guys, if you go for a filter of this size, the filter capacity is really, how to say, it's not the key point, you know, like I would say even half size filter capacity is enough for filtration of a small aquarium where you would use a filter like that because all you want is a little bit of mechanical filtration, a little bit of biological filtration and simply water movement and a pipe outside of the filter. So if you have this much filter capacity or this much, that wouldn't matter, at least to me. I would prefer as well to have the pump inside the body. So who knows, maybe I will send this one back and then ask for a new build or just get the spare parts and replace it myself. No, it's not possible. I need another lid. So maybe just get another lid since that's modular. Okay, let's see what else is available by Liquido. Uh, so that's the Nano in and out. So those thingies and they are available in different length, the, the inflow at least. Um, uh, so there you have it, different sizes, uh, not so interesting. Uh, yeah, that's how the water is distributed, goes in all different directions. Um, yep. Put that on your hand. Okay guys, look forward for my Instagram post with this tiny little uh, thingies here. Uh, there you see the different sizes of the inflow, they can be longer, shorter. Uh, this is some sort of a skimmer. Uh, version that looks like a VUPA, uh, but I think the the top part needs to be manually adjusted. I don't think it floats, so you have to manual, manually adjust uh, the float here um, of the surface skimmer. Um, I don't know. I might look into this one as well, but I'm not too interested in this one since I think it's still pretty big in size, but who knows? This is actually almost the size of a VUPA. Uh, I have a VUPA somewhere in the basement and I would, I would even love to give a VUPA here for size comparison. Okay guys, let me know in the comments below. Uh, comment VUPA if you want me to get the VUPA, it will take me like a minute or something. Uh, if you want to see uh, the VUPA uh, in size comparison, if not, I will just skip that part, but I think that might be interesting. Um, Okay, here we have a T branch uh, that is doing like a CO2 injection. So it's probably, I don't know, run about this size. Uh, is there an image of that? Or oh, there you have it. So pretty small in your hand. So you have like a 90 degree angle and from the bottom the CO2 is injected and then you have some sort of diffusion in there like a tiny inline diffuser. Uh, so if you need a 90 degree elbow and you want to use a CO2 diffuser at the same time, that might be handy. I've seen some inline diffusers from, what's the brand, CO2 art. Uh, they're pretty small, 
as well. So I don't think this is a, a space saver, but you get the 90 degree angle for your filter needs uh, already kind of built in into the diffuser. So maybe uh, that might be something. Uh, and then that's pretty cool as well. A nano in inflow, how to say, inline, nano inline heater. Um, so two sizes, 20 watt and 40 watt works with the 12 volt DC, very accurate, 0 0.1 Celsius accuracy. And again, that will fit on the palm of your hand. So I guess if that's my hand, it should be same diameter in size, just half size of that one, maybe even smaller because I mean, look at this guy's hand. So either Matteo is having huge hands or the inline heater is even smaller than the filter. Uh, so this is a heater for inline. Um, so yeah, might be super cool to uh, get the heater as well. Oh, there you see it uh, here, the heater attached to the filter with the lily pipe attached straight to it. Um, it's smaller, it definitely is smaller size. Uh, that might be really cool. But for my nano tanks, I don't use a heater. So maybe if you keep, keep a beta and you have, I don't know, if your room temperature is too cold, you might want to look into a heater options. Yeah, and that's it here on the, I don't know, product overview from Liquido Design. Uh, we have here some images. Yeah, we've seen those. Mounted to the side, vertical, this is quite the bigger model. And uh, yeah. So guys, um, what do we do next? Yeah, you wanted me to get the Vupa, so please uh, wait a second and I will get the Vupa for you. I think I have to leave the microphone here, otherwise I'm afraid the connection gets lost. You're gonna hear weird sounds. So you're gonna be back in a second. So we are back again, uh, huh, okay, definitely lost a few viewers here, so uh, wiring up again, how is the audio, you should hear me quite well, okay, so, so let me put, the, here we have the Vupa, this is the first generation Vupa, uh, yeah, bin, pretty much one of the first to buy it and I immediately damaged it because I attached it to 220 volt while as that power adapter yeah wasn't the right one so here we have the Vupa uh, 
Okay, so I think I've been wrong. So the Vupa is definitely smaller, but this is the round shaped Vupa. And I'm not sure if the square size Vupa is uh, a lot bigger. I don't have the version two of the Vupa with the automatic float switch. So maybe the surface skimmer that we have seen here from Liquido, where is it? Uh, let's get quickly to it. There it is. Uh, it might be actually the size of the Vupa, so it's comparably smaller. So if we put this to a side-by-side -side comparison, you see here, uh, <laughs> the canister filter is almost the size of the Vupa. Uh, the height, uh, just a little bit, maybe two centimeters. Okay, with the top is a little bit more. If you compare from the bottom, you see uh, here, you see here how much smaller uh, the Vupa is. And I know a lot of you guys suggested in the comments, like why don't I use the Vupa as a internal filter that would at the same time eliminate the need for tubing, for lily pipes, and just simply, you know, just circulate the water and keep the surface clean. And the reason is, to be honest, in my memory, this thing was bigger. It was simply a lot bigger in my memory and I thought uh, that is going to look bulky. But anyway, this one I can equip from the back with just as little as this lily pipes inside the aquarium, which is, you know, let's be honest, is close to nothing inside the tank, while as a Vupa takes more space. And for now, let's get over to the tank and uh, yeah, have a little comparison over there. Let me take you over here. So this is the scape. Hey George, thanks for the super chat. Uh, George Farmer, my aquascaping colleague, friend from UK, full-time aquascaper from UK, also working with me for Tropica, content creator. He told me he's busy, he cannot spend too much time with us on the live stream because He's working on a new video for Tropica YouTube and I'm super, super excited about that. So, okay, we put this here and compare this inside. Uh, let me tilt down a little bit. Okay, so here we have, first of all, a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me show that to you and talk through it briefly, what we see here in the image. I think that's pretty cool, uh, the whole lineup here. Yeah, that's gonna make a nice, thumbnail in post if I don't want to keep the current one. So we have here on the very left side, uh, this is the ES Superjet 300. Here we have the ES Superjet 150, the ES 150. This is the D100 from Liquido Design. This is the smallest one. And here we have the first generation Vupa. So that one is a lot smaller than the ES150. And that was the only aesthetically pleasing filter that I could imagine in the past using on that aquarium. Now with that one, I think it could even stand on the side. It is so small. Uh, the only thing I have to see how that connects, that's a little bit too tall, I think. Yeah, if, 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 if I would shorten the pipe here, I think that could even work standing next to the tank standing like this next to the aquarium. Can you see this? Now let's get a little bit closer. Let's get a little bit closer here. Okay, George left. Uh, you know what? I will be the first one to see the video before everyone else because I will do the thumbnail for it. Okay, we have here the filter next to the tank, by the way, um, yeah, let's give a little clean to the glass. And I definitely also need my MacBook here to follow up with your comments. So I see what is going on. Okay, Aquascapers is asking about the prices. Uh, so I have no idea about the price of that little filter. Um, yeah, I asked to buy it and then Matteo from Liquidity Design offered to send it to me for free. So full disclosure, I haven't paid for that filter. This is 
a test and review unit. If I like it, I keep it and then I will figure out with Matteo if I owe him something or if it is a gift. If not, it goes back. And so far, do I want to spoil you? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Should I keep this filter? Do you think it's cool? Uh, would you like to have a filter like this? Tell me in the comments. And then I will tell you what my first impression is so far of it. Okay. Also, a lot of people ask me about if, you know, I have uh, moisture here on the glass. You've seen it. It was just a tiny little bit um, of moisture. And uh, yeah, that Monte Carlo definitely needs some trimming. If you look here close, uh, you barely see you barely see the sand. I have to trim that back. It is growing above the rocks here. Just look at that. That dry start goes like crazy here. All that Monte Carlo in between the rocks growing on top. I'll have to trim back that all here. Two, three centimeters. So we are missing the path. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, I don't know. I might do a separate video. Just no commentary. Just trimming the Monte Carlo. Really curious how a ASMR type video like that would work. So now let's try to equip the filter to that tank. Uh, I think, uh, like I said before, so if that goes from the side here, you know, this is the outflow, this is the inflow here, uh, then, or let's, let's, let's keep the inflow, no, this is the outflow, sorry, apologize. If we keep it here, we see this is just a little bit too, too long, the metal part. Uh, so to cut off stainless steel is not easy. It's definitely doable. And if I cut it somewhere just above that line, you know, like visually on that height, if I cut it here, I can cut it here. I can connect it with a little piece of silicon tube and then the filter can be standing next to the aquarium. So this is for me solution number one. Unfortunately, cutting stainless steel is not that easy, but it can be done. Um, all you need is just a metal saw and a little bit of time and patience. Uh, but I could also put it on the side. So let's see how that would look like if I was about to put it on the side. I think I have to rotate it this way if I want to keep that in the front. But do I want to keep it in the front or better the inflow? I think the inflow should go to the front and this will go more towards the back. Okay, this is something that has been inserted in the bottom, just fall out. That I told you a little piece of plastic and I pressed it with my finger inside and now it became loose. Uh, but you know, that can be fixed with super glue. So, uh, that is not ideal, but that's not the end of the world. Just, you know, you can see here some super glue markings on that bottom ceiling part. Hopefully you see that. Uh, so a little bit of super glue and it is going to stay here. But I should, I will just put it inside. This way I cannot lose it. So let's keep the inflow in the front and the outflow, put it towards the back. Let's play out this scenario. Uh, so in that case, I would need some tubing connected here, connected here. Should I do it like right now? What do you say guys? Should we connect the filter here in this, on the side? Or another option for me is to, um, another option for me is to put the filter behind the tank right there. I still have some space available behind it. Uh, but if I put it in perfect vertical position, it doesn't go behind. So I have to slide, whoops, the entire thing a little bit to the front, including the ONF base. So like this, then the filter can go behind, but the openings are showing into the wrong direction. They're showing to the front. So I would have to put the filter like this. So you need a little bit of space behind. Unfortunately, they ha you have this 90 degree angle. 
And I think those things can be changed for something that goes directly into that way. And then you can use this one like this and this vertically pointing out. So I would wish this filter would come with some accessories so you can unscrew this one and then maybe unscrew this one and then have it mounted in a different way just to offer you even more flexibility and variety how to attach to your aquarium so it could be super compact behind it. Um, so I think this way is the most compact position. So if I keep it like this but put it behind the tank this way, this would be the most compact situation. Let's see how the lily pipes fit in the back. That could go in the back here. No, it's a little bit too long for my situation and I have already moved some rocks in the back, but yeah, no problem. Uh, so that definitely doesn't go all the way inside in the back. What about the outflow? Yeah, the outflow would fit just above the substrate, but guys, this is, this is crazy. If you have a look on the tank, let me just take the gimbal and move free around. You see, I build all the way up. I build all the way up towards the top. There is literally no space. Uh, I build all the way to the top in the back of this aquarium. And by the way, you can see the super healthy Monte Carlo roots uh, here. Yeah, someone says to use the suction cup. So the problem is, but with suction cups, guys, this has to stay under water and if, how to show you, yeah, you can see maybe here, wait a second, come on gimbal, is it working, no? You can see here, those slots, so let's get this one out of the way. Let's say this is the lowest position I can keep it in the tank. That top slot is so close to the water surface that it would easily start siphoning in air from the surface. So I would have to seal the top slots and stuff. And ah, I think that would be just too tight and hanging there. So I think the, the solution for me is to put it on the side here. Uh, I mean, that's just tubing. And I can easily, I can easily change the position in the future or in a future setup. And yeah, that could sit here. So that would go in this direction. And that would be here. The only problem is also the distance here. I wish it was more close together. So I like, you know, those of you who know me, I like to use the lily pipes very close to each other. Um, hmm. Ooh, how to do this? <laughs> uh, because, yeah, I mean, the outflow can, you can be sitting here on the top of the rock. I think that's possible as well. So we can connect it here with the tubing. So. I think let's get the tubing and connect it and see how it fits. Not going to fill up with water, but just to give you an idea how it finally would look like. So let's get some tubing here. This is for the small, this is for the large tube. So light this on here and see what length do we need where do we cut this somewhere around here okay this is connected that goes in here that goes there like how much length do I need here I think that much is enough and I still have enough tubing for various experiments. Let's take this out, apply a little bit of moisture to the metal parts. 
so they go inside the silicon tube a little bit easier. And that is tight. Uh, the lily pipes look to me same size diameter, but the tubing is different. That tubing is bigger than this tubing, but that one needs to be small because of the pump. So you really have to squeeze in the outflow into that silicon tubing. Making it warm with hot water will help. Okay. Let's put this inside. And there you go. This is how it could look like if that was equipped on the tank. Yeah, that one could be rotated a little bit towards the middle and I think that one can be shortened a little bit. It works quite well. So tiny, tiny little filter. Uh, not the nicest solution like this because that distance is too big for me. I don't like that it lays on the side. Like I said, I would even wish to be, have the pump inside the body, have it even more compact in size. And just out of curiosity, because a lot of you have mentioned this before, like for size comparison, let's put in the Vupa inside and see how much space it actually takes. So it doesn't fit in the front because of the rock. I hit the rock there. Let's try and ah, those sounds. Metal on glass doesn't sound nice. Now let's put this inside that corner. Yeah. Again, that sits on the rock. Uh, it, it's not com it doesn't go completely inside that corner. And the problem with this is just look at the bottom. It is completely dark. And the uh, top left corner here, it completely blocks the light. So yes, I could have used the Vupa but that would have blocked the light or would block the light in the foreground and it just creates too much shadow. Uh, you can only do this if you have like cosmetic scent in the foreground, no plants, or if you don't have this slope like I have and you have some, I don't know, free space in the back so you can actually hide the Vupa in the back like a small internal filter. Um, so yeah, uh, as for this tank, Vupa is not a solution for me, despite the fact that this one is broken. I don't know why I keep it. I should get probably a replacement pump and see if I can fix it. That is something for another job. Uh, so that has been open. Let me give it a little spray. Where's my water sprayer? Okay, I'm gonna spray it later. Let's put the lid back on and have a little Q&A with you guys. You've been waiting for it. So let's go back. Back on track here. So, just type in your questions. Now is the time, right, for a little QA. Uh, I hope so far it's been uh, fun. Shit. This is on camera. <laughs> uh, oh my god. I I wish I could just keep going with a live stream, uh, but unfortunately the wooden table, I have to, I have to do something. Uh, we don't have a wooden floor, we have a, a what is it called, v vinyl. Okay, this is embarrassing. So, uh, please, uh, what to say? Apologize. Be patient with me. Just keep the live stream running. This is real life, guys. Let me get the biggest pieces out of the way. So. Okay, let's take the towel and put it on the table and wipe all the water away.
And I have to be super careful wiping the water away because there are still some small pieces of glass. Yikes, I hate it. I think I should get myself just plastic cups. I break so many water glasses. What do they say? Broken glass brings you luck or something. Okay, so. True story, I literally wanted to replace these glasses a while ago. Uh, they just don't like the looks of them. And they break really easily. Used to have really a ton of them and just by, I, I just tipped it over and it was broken because it just landed on the table. Cheap quality. So, ah, oh, the bench is wet as well. Oh shit. Ah. Guys, do you want to wait until I wipe everything away? Uh, or kind of wrap up, finish the live stream? I think you, you want the, the Q&A. Okay, um, I mean, nothing gonna happen if water stays for five minutes on the bench that is here in the back. Just type in your questions for the Q&A and I will go through them. Try to keep the Q&A short and then clean up the mess before the missus comes back. Okay, so. Poo. Am I in the frame? No, my head is cut off. Like this. Need a remote for that gimbal. Okay, guys. Uh, so, QA time, and I'm thirsty, and my water glass is broken. <laughs> I need a new one. Maybe I should break a few more, then I have an excuse to get new ones. Okay. So, uh, let me see some of your questions here. Uh, uh, can, uh, James Aquariums and Aquascaping is asking, so you get the same type of water flow from the stainless pipes as you do the glass bell shaped milky pipe. Uh, well, that one you don't get the same flow, I guess. Uh, it's simply, you know, it's a different shape. Uh, the lily pipe is so popular because of its shape, it's creating a very gentle flow. And this is because of the, you know, this round shape uh, outflow. It, it, it opens and then the water is whirled somehow. It comes out gently. So you don't have this really strong sort of uh, jet stream that blows everything away. Uh, so with that metal thing, I don't know how the stream is going to be. Uh, if it's gentle, if it's strong, uh, I will test it uh, and then I will see. So, uh, but I know those metal pipes, they're available as jet, like just round shape outflow. Also, there are some glass outflow pipes that have this in nano size, just a round shape opening, uh, especially for small tanks. Uh, they have a pretty strong flow and it's very directional close to the surface. Uh, so, uh, I see here someone says, nano filter in Vietnam, please. Uh, so yeah, those filters from Vietnam, when they become available in Europe, I'm in touch with the guys. Uh, I will hopefully get one sent over for test review comparison with the Liquido one. Uh, I think that is going to be fun. Mm. Uh, Rudra Karpa is asking, uh, oh, hey MD, late to the party. Yes, you are a little bit. Uh, MD, you missed how I broke one of these glasses right on the table here. I've been wiping out the mess. You can just scroll back like two, three minutes, literally. Uh, happened live on camera. And uh, yeah, you see the filter there behind me, the tiny little filter. It's so tiny. 
Uh, you could literally fit it as an external filter on any nano aquarium or your no filter bowl and make it a filtered bowl if you want it. Um, um, uh, okay. Uh, Uh, do I have to pre-fill the filter? Yes, this filter has no automatic prime uh, press button or anything. So with any canister filter, you have two options. Uh, you could, uh, you know, I, I would say this build here is a little bit difficult to uh, open and fill up with water. So what I would do, I would fill in, put this into the tank and keep this one outside the tank. This is the outflow. And if you have enough water here, you just, you know, siphon on it like and then the water goes inside and fills the entire filter alternatively what you could do is like will it hold okay just take apart this lily pipe so you have this like in the aquarium this on the outside and then have like a little funnel here and slowly fill in water here and it's going to fill up the filter go all the way up until here then you stop and then you put the lily pipe back in and then you have so little air on that side remaining so when you turn on the filter it is going to run through and the air will go through the system so you just basically attach like this and fill it from here with a little funnel. Um, I have a tiny little RO tap that I could use for that purpose in case you haven't seen it yet. I have here a three-way water tap here in the kitchen so when I open here that's the main tap the mixer called and warm water on, on the side, this is RO. Literally, this is a three-way water tap. I can draft RO water here. And down here, I have an extension tubing that I use for water changes on my large aquariums. So I have here the tubing with the RO system and that tiny little tap I could use to fill up that filter to kind of, yeah, fill it up prior starting it. And yeah, the whole reverse osmosis unit system filter series uh, is coming some, at some time in the future when I get to it. Uh, <laughs> MD, hi everyone saying hello. Guy, uh, guys, I, I would love to have MD here for a live chat on YouTube, but um, I'm not there yet. I'm getting ready for that. Uh, I'm preparing for that. I have my streaming setup uh, already built almost completely in my new home office. You might have seen it where I teased you with the box, you know, when I had this filter still in the box. Um, what was the video? Yeah, it was the pro tip last week with the growing immersed plants. Yeah, in that video you've seen uh, the, the streaming setup and I will be able to I will be able to yeah, in, invite people via FaceTime and doing YouTube uh, live and then have a live conversation with anyone in the world uh, and then pull your comments into the live stream. So I'm investing now a little bit into new gear to be capable of doing these things. And I see here another super chat from Steve Killing Back Music. Hi Yuris, I'm going to create a sand path in my tank. How do I keep it from moving onto the soil around it? How do you stop banked substrate collapse. Uh, so Steve, first of all, thanks for the super chat and everyone who is interested in, I don't know, getting his question asked, uh, I'm losing the overview here. That's just one way to do it. Uh, uh, but don't feel, um, yeah, uh, how to say, uh, under pressure to, to, to do any super chats, but yeah, of course, appreciate them, uh, especially in this uh, COVID-19 times. So uh, yeah, to answer the question, so as you can see in my nano tank, or as you have seen uh, for everyone watching now who has missed that, just skip back, not now, later in the video. I don't know what minute that was. And you can see in the small aquarium behind me, the slope is, is very tall. And the, the how to say, the, the trick to keep the soil from mixing into the sand is to have all the soil covered with plants. To do so, plant heavily from the beginning. This is going to help you have a full carpet uh, instantly or very quick. Uh, for example, this tank is running as a dry start. And um, on a dry start here, uh, I did it as a lazy dry start. Uh, the big difference between normal dry start and the lazy dry start is I don't plant. I just take the carpeting plant, I cut it in small pieces and I sprinkle it on top of soil 
and basically from there on it's a, base, a normal uh, dry start. And if you want to see this in action, uh, look down below in the description of that video is the making of video of that aquarium where I show this technique, how I use it. Uh, it's like seeds, but don't trust any seeds, aquarium seeds on wherever you can buy them. They're all fake. Uh, in best case, that's hygrophila species, stem plants. You're never gonna get Eleocharis, Hemianthus cuba or Glossostigma seeds on the internet. They just do not exist. Trust me, I work for Tropica, which is one of the world leading largest uh, aquarium plant uh, nurseries. And they said that's a miracle. This is economically like close to impossible to collect seeds from carpeting plants because carpeting plants reproduce so quickly, they, they carpet around or through tissue culture that simply economically not worth it collecting seeds and then sell a bunch of seeds for one dollar uh, on the internet. Uh, so that's a miracle. So you're gonna get, I don't know, herbs, some something terrestrial, whatever, or in best case, that's stem plants like hygrophila um, uh, species, uh, could be also Lobelia cardinalis. Uh, so that's the best case if you buy seeds on the internet. So don't buy seeds for a carpet, uh, follow my lazy uh, dry start or lazy start technique. And another thing is, uh, yeah, if you have gaps between the hardscape, like you have like a hardscape in the back and the foreground is cosmetic sand, just stuff all the holes with the filter sponges, filter floss, fill those holes so nothing can get through it. I think that's the best way to keep uh, soil and sand prevent from mixing. And if you have like a huge slope, uh, just have some hardscape like left and right. So you have some natural sort of, how to say, protection from everything coming down. Don't use amano shrimps that are digging like crazy. Uh, another trick, a little bit advanced, I haven't done it myself, but I will try out. I've seen guys from Liquid Nature from Austria doing it, also Pahi Aquarium. Um, they use super glue, they actually just super glue, uh, with li liquid super glue, they keep the cosmetic sand in place. If it is a very, very, what's called steep slope, uh, they just super glue it in place, which is crazy. Uh, so. Yeah, and you can even clean it with a brush. It becomes like rock solid. Uh, I haven't done it before, but it's probably possible. So I don't know, somebody could try that. So I see here another super chat. Uh, what does it say? How do I open it? Uh, from Sugo849. And uh, Yeah, so it's, it's just a 20 something super chat. I don't know what that is. Uh, Sugo849, sorry, I don't see any question here. Uh, thank you very much, I appreciate it. I don't know the currency, uh, where it's from. Uh, would love to answer it, so, but I don't see any. There's just one symbol. Uh, okay, uh, let's go on. Um, uh, Rudra Karpa is asking, can you give some advanced uh, tips on how to grow a Bulbitis fern. Um, Bulbitis fern, the Congo fern, is, how to say, it prefers CO2 injection, it prefers soft water, prefers good flow, uh, so it's definitely a medium to advanced category plant in my opinion, even if it's labeled differently based on uh, the plant source you buy it from. I think Tropica has Bulbitis as a medium category plant labeled, please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know exactly. So, um, and how to grow it properly, just don't bury it in the soil, attach it to hardscape, uh, provide it good uh, nutrition, uh, by this I mean pressurized CO2, some liquid fertilizer, good light, and uh, yeah, preferably soft water, and then you're good to go. Uh, no big secrets here. Uh, where did, did you find the filter from Pietro Fiorani? Uh, Pietro Fiorani, I guess you mind this little Liquido filter. The link is down in the description below to Liquido Design. So that filter, I don't know where to buy it online. The brand itself and all the, how to say, contact options to the brand to Liquido Design, you can find in the description, there is a link to the homepage. Uh, so just check it out, the link there and uh, yeah, then reach them and they will tell you where to buy the filter. Uh, also there is Zulandia, they put uh, uh, Liquido and myself in touch. Uh, so I think they have it on sale. So maybe some shops in Italy have it. Uh, it's pretty 
new. So, like I said, it's not very common on the market. Uh, Sebastian Janavo is asking, I know you don't like it, but what do you think of Flourish Axel for CO2 in nano? Regards from Argentina. Uh, Sebastian, Axel is not liquid CO2. Axel is based same as uh, Easy Carbo from Easy Life uh, and Axel from Seachem. Uh, those products are based, I think, on glutaraldehyde. Uh, glutaraldehyde is uh, a chemical that is used for disinfection in hospitals. They spray it on surfaces and that ingredient kills uh, microbes, bacteria, like everything that is alive. Um, so this is also why you can use Excel and Easy Carbo to kill algae. Uh, I, I showed it uh, in my video, how to get rid of staghorn algae. Actually, right now I'm recording a hyperlapse over several days how I'm treating my nano tank that was on my desktop, the UNS 5N. Uh, during the renovations, it was without filter, without CO2 for a few weeks. Then, you know, stechron algae started to grow there. Um, I kind of let it grow, became massive. Now I'm treating it with the uh, easy carbo, but it's same like Seachem Axel. And uh, yeah, I'm recording a hyperlapse. So you will see on video how it turns from normal color to pink white and then disappears. Uh, gonna be pretty cool. So that is what the product is for and it works great for that purpose. As for plants, uh, those products, they don't add any significant amount of CO2 to the water. You could also take a straw and just, you know, like pff, blow into your aquarium that's gonna add a similar amount of CO2 to the water. This is so insignificant. So this is, there is no liquid CO2 in a plastic bottle. That's a miracle. If you want liquid CO2, you need a pressurized bottle that is cooled down like 100, 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, there you have liquid CO2. Uh, in a plastic bottle, there is no liquid CO2 possible. Uh, enough uh, renting on, on, on this topic. Uh, okay, Patrick Roy is asking, is it possible to grow dwarf hair grass without CO2 and liquid fertilizers? Um, Patrick, I'm afraid not, especially dwarf hair grass like Eleocarus mini is pretty much a demanding plant. So it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, I would say it's medium category. Uh, it definitely grows well in soil and at least you need liquid CO2. So if you know my dentist aquarium, the one with the mini landscape rocks fully covered with Hygrophila pinatifida. So in that tank, I have had Eleocarus mini or I still have for several years with very, very little liquid dosing, but I have pressurized CO2 on that tank. Uh, if you, I don't understand why people don't want to have pressurized CO2, but if you are in that situation and you want a carboning plant, then try out Monte Carlo, try out Marsilea Hizuta, try out moss carpet. Yeah, moss carpet. Just tie moss on a lot of flat rocks and put them in your tank. Um, Rudra Carpe again, I'm participating for IPLC next year. Can you suggest a good budget friendly tank size? So yeah, 60p is budget friendly, I would say, is a good size. You can achieve something, uh, if possible, get a custom uh, 60 centimeter tank with some extra depth. So I would say 60 wide, 45 centimeter deep, and yeah, 36 or 40 centimeter tall. Uh, that was about the size of my big 60, which is now sold. Uh, it was a 60 by 50 by 40. And that one I ranked 126 last year in IPLC. And uh, yeah, I think with the 60 centimeter with some extra depth, you can actually rank pretty high. But in general, the smaller the tank, the more difficult it is to rank high in IPLC. Um, the best tank size for IPLC is 120, 150 centimeters. So uh, yeah, if, if you want to rank high, I think you are definitely to a better race if you have a larger tank. Um, wouldn't carbonated be considered CO2 in a bottle? Johan, yes, but that's dissolved carbon. That's not pure liquid carbon. It's a different. Uh, but yes, you can use carbonated water uh, for fertilizing your aquarium with CO2. That's possible. That's actually how 
uh, pressurized CO2 has been discovered by Takashi Amano. Uh, there is the, uh, the Origin of Creation book, the biography of Takashi Amano. And in this book, you can read a story how Takashi Amano discovered he was drinking whiskey soda and he saw the small bubbles forming on the inside of the glass. And then he was reading on the bottle and it said carbonated water, like carbon dioxide. And he was like, oh my God, that can be used for, you know, fertilizing aquariums. Then he bought all the soda, just pure carbonated water uh, in that bar, rushed home and put all the carbonated water into his tank, uh, probably a little bit drunk and probably in the middle of the night and then has been watching his plants, uh, you know, forming a lot of oxygen bubbles. And that's how he at least discovered CO2 uh, injection into planted tanks. Um, I don't know if he was the first one, but definitely one of the first. It's been very many, many years ago probably even before Dupla first launched their very first pressurized CO2 system, because I believe otherwise Takashi Amano would have known from them. So probably he was the first one uh, to discover it this way. But uh, I don't know if that's completely true. Um, Uh, what do we have? Mic cheap light for a 30 centimeter and 60 centimeter tank. Um, so yeah, I would say twin star CC line, this double C or also the CA. Uh, that's the entry level twin star light, the now only available with RGB. So the entry level twin star light is also equipped with RGB technique. Uh, that's pretty much budget friendly. Um, would definitely recommend this one. Uh, if you want to go even cheaper, like for pure white light, probably Chihiro's is the way to go, but I personally don't have any experience with Chihiro's lights. Um, I might give them a try in the future now that I'm no longer sponsored by Twinster, so that wouldn't be offensive uh, against uh, them. Uh, just to see if it's any good, put it to a side-by-side -side comparison and just see if it's worth going that uh, low budget route or if it's worth uh, investing a little bit more. But to be honest, in the past, I avoided cheap brands like Heroes in, in general, cheap lights, uh, simply because I wanted to support brands that kind of pushing the boundaries, developing cute, cool new products that are supporting uh, creators, that are sponsoring contests and events. Uh, you know, it's like with our everything we buy, we make a decision who we support with. Oh, um, Sugo849, again, donated 40 something as a super chat. ONF3500 Kelvin or other one best for planted tank. Um, Sugo, I don't understand your question, if this is a question or if that's a statement. Uh, but the ONF light is definitely a really good light. Um, it's not really budget friendly. I would say the nano lights I have over there, the ONF flat nano is pretty much the state of the art nano light right now on the market. I think everyone in the nano section is using the ONF flat uh, nano uh, and the plus or with a stand uh, is using them. They're pretty cool and, and yeah, I, I would say kind of budget friendly around 100 bucks. Um, uh, and, and even the bigger versions of the ONF, I really like them. Uh, I have the new ONF Flat One Plus, the new version I have here. Uh, there will be video about it. And I think already now I can tell you they're going to be a big giveaway. I reached the 50,000 subscriber milestone here on YouTube. So thank you everyone who is subscribed to my channel. And if you're watching right now, you're not a subscriber yet, I would highly appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Like hit it so hard you break a glass, okay? Um, so yeah, like I said, there is going to be a giveaway with ONF uh, regarding the 50K milestone. So watch out for that video. Uh, how long am I streaming here? 1620, so that's one hour and 20 minutes streaming already. Oh my God, that's, that's getting long, guys. Okay, I think it's time to wrap up the live stream. I only wanted to stream max one hour or something. Uh, so thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, once again, huge shout out to Liquido Design and uh, Zulandia for putting us in touch. Liquido Design, Matteo, for providing this dope tiny little filter. Uh, I'm going to play around, find the best position possible on that small aquarium. I think 
guys, I think I'm going to put it vertical like this. I'm going to put it like this and I'm going to shorten the outflow in a way that it's sitting just right above here. Uh, so I can have it in vertical position next to the tank. I think that is going to be the way I will use this filter uh, or I will see if I can get the version with the pump built in because then I don't have to shorten that outflow. That would be pretty dope. I would love that. Would be a perfect solution for my little nano tank. Then I'm going to fill it with water and add some shrimps. Uh, I've been thinking to add fish inside, uh, but I think I'm not going to keep it very long. I would rather rescape it and do something new inside. I just like the form factor of this nano tanks. Uh, but um, how to say? Mm, yeah, maybe I will make a voting so you can uh, decide then in the comments what I should do with it. And something I will try as well is to put it on the side like this. Uh, I haven't showed you before, so you can see here this joint, what is super cool about it, this is like pneumatic, I know it from CO2. So you can take out this little plastic tube here. And uh, no, I was thinking the tubing would, no, I don't need the tubing because you see, the tubing goes inside, uh, the, the lily pipe goes inside the tubing and that plastic thing goes inside uh, the tubing. So actually, I think the stainless steel part could go directly inside here, just like this. There is a rubber seal inside. And this could go like this on my mini pond here. Uh, let me just rotate it, rotate it the right way so you can see it. Yeah, you can see it from here. So that could go, yeah, actually let's put it into in water. That could go like this inside uh, the mini pond and that's pretty dope, uh, but it's quite tall in the back. So I would have to find a solution how to uh, make the return and have the mini pond filtered. Uh, but honestly, I kind of enjoy the mini pond. Doesn't have a filter, doesn't have CO2. Everything works super well in here. The Hygrophila Araguaya actually has just started flowering. Uh, check out the Instagram post. By the way, guys, uh, follow me on Instagram. There is a link to my Instagram profile down in the description below. Uh, there you can see some behind the scenes stuff and also some just in time updates. Uh, also on that little aquarium, I showed the Hygrophila Araguaya flowering. Uh, there are some pictures in my Instagram profile. So um, if I don't see any super chats that I feel I have to answer. Uh, let me scroll quickly through the live chat. So, nope, uh, I'm good to go. The job is done. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hit the like button if you enjoyed watching this video. That really helps, um, uh, really helps more than you can imagine just do me a favor, everyone watching right now, just hit the like button. It costs you nothing, but does make a huge difference for me. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, I will start working on the Moss Iwagumi uh, for Friday video. There will be a little update on it. I will do some uh, modifications on it, some maintenance, and yeah, uh, maybe filming something else for you guys. So see you next time. Bye-bye.